Today we are observing a rare animal, an American tiger, a flying tiger, equipped with two G85 engines with modest thrust, one might think this beast would quickly find itself in trouble against larger predators. Don't be mistaken. Its lightweight and aerodynamic design make it a formidable opponent. The Tiger II, also known as the Freedom Fighter, has evolved across the globe, but today only a few specimens survive here and there. They can be found in various environments, and notably in Switzerland. Alright, that was fun, and honestly, even if those were too great introduction, uh, we need to start this video. But you know, the purpose of this channel, I confess, was rather selfish at the beginning. It was mainly for my own enjoyment. Well, it seems like more and more people are enjoying it, which is pretty cool, and I thank you very much, each and every one of you. Let's make the most of this moment together. We don't know what tomorrow holds. It's just a little message for my dear subscribers. Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to this new flight simulator review. We are beginning to be quite familiar with DC SC designs, they have produced numerous aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, such as the F-15, F-16, Concorde and many more. So we are starting to get a good idea of the quality of their products and what to expect. As we discussed with Dean, the founder of DC Design, in this interview, where you will surely learn a lot if you take the time to look at it, their philosophy is to offer a simple, so not what we call a study level, a simple but fun aircraft with good flight models, as close as possible to real planes in Microsoft Flight Simulator limits. For this, uh, DC has built relationships with numerous pilots or ex-pilots or experts to ensure that the sensations are as close as possible. And this, I believe, frustrates some people because all DC SC aircraft are indeed different, and each requires an approach, a learning curve for takeoff, for using the aircraft to its capabilities, on, and for landing. Well, that was again quite a long introduction, so let, let's get into it. So today we are looking at the new, I mean from the 60s and 70s, fighter jet add-on, a great uh, time of aviation innovation, by the way. This F5E Tiger II is offered at the price of around 20 euros, 20 dollars, and I don't know in English pound, maybe 17, with a single version and a lot of uh, liveries, very diverse, um, with a lot from Asia, actually. We know that graphics are generally not DC's strong point, and this new F5 doesn't deviate from that. I really appreciate the work done on the cockpit. The atmosphere is incredible, the rendering is serious, with good textures and some wear effects. But the polygon count is a bit limited for my test, which still results in some angular shapes here. And that's something that I don't like too much because you have it in front of your eyes. The mirrors are very prominent and since they are close to the pilot and easily within view, I would have preferred them to receive a special care. Despite this, as I said, the atmosphere in the cockpit is really good, you really feel like you are in a fighter jet. Regarding the exterior model, there are two opposite schools. Those who like clean textures and those who like the aircraft to show signs of wear. For me, the ideal choice is to do like Bravo Airspace, which offers in its livery pack a dirty version and a clean version. 
or like CG simulations with the Rafale, a clean model and a dirty model. Here, all the liveries are clean. It's a choice of the developer. On the 3D model itself, there is nothing to say, it's perfectly modeled. However, regarding the details, the level of details, I think some aspect could have received more attention. And specifically, I think of the landing gear, which lacks details. And the rendering of the cockpit, when you are in the exterior view, is a bit too simple. For those who will purchase the add-on on PC, you will be able to find as usual, and I think it will be able on the DC Design Discord, the weapon pack, and here's what it looks like with the maximum payload. In terms of lightning, the night brightness in the cockpit faithfully reproduces that's of the real one, and there is nothing to report on the exteriors. However, regarding the sound, we cannot judge the F5 rendition immediately because unfortunately the sound pack is still delayed. It's a bit like uh, the Rafale release, you know? So the good news is that Sim Acoustic is doing the sound pack of the F5 also, and Sim Acoustic as you may not know, is, I think, the best for making jet sounds. Each time it's amazing. So in the meantime, the decision was made to use those of the F4 Phantom, which has General Electric's G79 engines, while those of the F5 use much smaller G85 engines. The rendering of the F4 Phantom uh, sound is very good, so that's not a problem, it's just that it's not the F5. As for the animations, all are done with care, but they are few. We do have a moving parachute, but we will have to wait until Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 to get something finally realistic. The movements of the landing gear and the canopy are perfectly smooth, which unfortunately is not always the case with the brand new Oleo uh, system on the front landing gear. This is quite unprecedented in flight simulation, so let's give the developer some time to refine the thing a bit more. Well, you know I'm not an expert in system, but I would say that the systems of this Air 5 are quite basic. And by the way, there is also some buttons in the cockpit that have no action, but it was to be expected. There is no HUD in this version of the Tiger 2 and no autopilots. It's like in the real one, but on the other hand, you have a gun sight and a radar with a map display. It's a bit like the Phantom F4. Here, it's old scoot flying, always with your hand on the stick. This is always the trickiest part in a review. I always spend some time researching the planes I'm going to review, and what I found is that generally, the F5 is described as an agile, simple and reliable aircraft. It's a small wing area, so it's about 186 square feet compared to 530 square feet for a Phantom F4 or 240 for a MiG-28. It has advantages and it has disadvantages. The relatively smaller wings area of the F5 compared to other aircraft of the same time had several implications for its aerodynamic performance and agility. So the first point is agility. A smaller wing area typically results in higher wing loading, which means that there is more weight per unit area of the wing. Higher wing loading can lead to improved maneuverability and agility, 
allowing the aircraft to respond more quickly to control inputs and change direction more rapidly. This characteristic made the F-5 highly maneuverable in dogfighting situations. The second point is regarding the speed. While a smaller wing area can contribute to agility, it may also limit the aircraft's maximum or lift capabilities at a lower speeds, potentially affecting takeoff and landing performance. And that's why they've made an OLEO system on the front landing gear to lift a bit the nose of the aircraft to make the takeoff easier. So, however, the F5 Tiger II was designed with a relatively high thrust to weight ratio, allowing it to maintain good performance across a range of speeds. And the final point I would like to mention um, is the stability. Smaller wings can also lead to reduce inherent stability, requiring more precise control inputs from the pilot to maintain stable flight. This characteristic can enhance the aircraft's responsiveness, but may also make it more demanding to fly, especially for less experienced pilots. Overall, the smaller wing area of the F-5 contributed to its reputation as a nimble and agile fighter, well suited for air combat roles. However, it also required skilled piloting to fully exploit its capabilities, especially in dynamic aerial engagement. And this is what makes SC Design F5 Tiger so unique and incredible, because the flight model, I mean, when you fly this aircraft, you exactly feel all, all that I have described. And Yes, there will be a learning curve to master this. Authenticity. That's how I would summarize the F5 offered by SC Designs. So yes, as we have seen, there are areas for improvement. The level of detail isn't incredible. But once again, it's the flight model and the sensations of the aircraft that makes all the difference. Don't be mistaken, as I explained in the previous chapter, it will take time to get the hang of the F5 and master its flight characteristics. But once you've got it down, you really feel like you're flying a 60s, 70s fighter jet. So naturally, for those who love pulling 10 G's turn, well, this plane isn't for you. Just keep flying the F-22 or the Rafale or any uh, fourth generation fighter jet. Here, you will need finesse and skill to fully exploit the capabilities of the F-5. And that's what in my opinion, makes it a very good add-on. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon on the channel. Bye-bye.